Recount Thursday is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app, that's arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? The World Wrestling Federation, for over 50 years, a revolutionary force in sports entertainment. Well, it's live, pal. We're really glad that you're our friend, and this is a friendship that'll never, ever end. Let's not get it. Everybody, three, count. One, two, three. One, two, three. Or maybe The Rock has got to beat Triple H himself, which means uh, he's got to beat the game uh, in the middle of the ring. Uh, and he has a $2 s for a wife. Uh. You're too damn selfish, and that's why you're sitting there with a bad leg, and that's why I kicked your leg out of your leg. You guys talk about being students of the game. I am the game, JR. Three ain't enough now, I need five. Welcome in Jim, Ryan, Matt, Tim, and intern Mark. Oh my goodness, what do we do? There's a one, there's a two. Oh! oh, wow. Well, you can take that brass ring and shove it up your ass. Welcome, everyone. Three Count Thursday. We are live here on Facebook. It is Thursday night, January the 21st, 2021. We are still the podcast of the millennium. We are glad you can join us this week. Make sure you check out our website, threecountthursday.com, where you'll find all of our social media links, our merchandise over at whatamaneuver.net. What a maneuver. Thank you, Tim. Our collar and elbow brand deal store dot collar and elbow brand dot com. Use uh, promo code three count for 10% off each and every order. Uh, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash three count Thursday. Check out home network, of course, and GSC sports at NGSC sports.com. And we stream daily at leapsports.com. Ryan, that would be naturally spelled L E E I B sports.com. That is the one. Make sure you subscribe on all podcast platforms, including Spotify, Amazon music. And, uh, like I said, if you can find one that we're not on folks, just, just let us know. We'll make sure we get on it. But I'm pretty sure we are on each and every single one. So uh, make sure you do that. I uh, hope everybody's having a good week. Uh, if you are following along in the live video, interact with us. Give it a like. Give it a share. We'd appreciate that. Um, uh, okay. I didn't watch wrestling last night. Scotty says, still trying to figure out what move from the top rope Casey Cannizzaro used to pin Tony Storm. Did anybody see NXT last night? Wild stuff. It's all yeah. over social media though. Okay, well I I I didn't see any, I did not see it today off to uh I will have to look into that. Jim uh, was too busy making Bernie Sanders memes all day. Well, <laughs> you you're not wrong. You... So is I'll explain it like this. As crazy as you thought the red arrow was or the black arrow the move Casey Cannizzaro did makes the red arrow look like a swan dive headbutt. Okay. I've watched it numerous times. The first three or four times I was like, oh, she botched this. And then I'm like, I'm pretty sure that's how it's a, I mean, it's a blind landing. It's wild. It's a, yeah, yeah it, it's a head bonker for sure. And it's only going to take one time for her to bust her noodle. And then she's going to maybe not go blind doing mighty that. Casey, mighty Casey. Well, I mean, if you're not afraid of catching COVID, you're probably not afraid of landing on your head either. So there is that, uh, Matt, how you doing? Doing well. Um, I'm normally like done my iced tea by the time we start. So this time I saved it. So we've got the Turkey Hill orange tea this evening. Ooh, I have so one good. round of the COVID vaccine in me. I'm feeling much stronger. I don't have my superpowers yet. 
hopefully they will come by this weekend. I, th I think they put the superpowers in the second shot. The they first do. shots, the first shot, the microchip. So okay. they make sure you can't go anywhere. Um, gotcha. the, the second one is, is where they put the superpowers. Understood. Keep us posted on that. Tim. How you doing? Um, I have the nastiest pimple right on my forehead and I have nothing to do to get rid of it other than for it to just look at me like my third eye on my head or fifth eye. If you're going to call me four eyes for wearing glasses, you're mean. <laughs> Um, right. Don't be mean. Don't, don't be, be mean. mean. Look, Oh, look, we have had, yes. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Jesus. Yeah. She just, wild. she shit whips herself into oblivion. Yeah, she did. And, um, but other than that, man, life is good. Uh, I'm just, I'm creative all around. I'm feeling good. I'm still on this diet thing. I ain't got, I ain't got no name brand substance. I'm just drinking filtered water out of a, a big old cup because I'm gnarly. Because you're an adult. I guess. I don't know. You can, you can do that when you're an adult. I'm old, bro. I'm about to go <laughs> check. I'm about to go check the mail in my draws. <laughs> <laughs> intern, uh, intern Mark. How you doing? Hi, boys. I'm doing real good. Real good. I, I had a really uh, almost terrifying experience at Roots Country Market on Tuesday. Oh, no. You tell. Well, I witnessed a woman, she was probably in her 60s. She was buying celery from a stand that was not Hodecker celery stand. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? She went, now, she went to a, the a produce stand. And why they have some good, I'm not going to name their names, but they have good produce at this other stand. She got her strawberries and she got her apples and she got her turnips. And then she said, I'll take some stalks of celery. And I looked and I thought to myself, lady, this isn't Hodecker's. And it was too late. The, the money had exchanged hands. She made a terrible, terrible mistake Tuesday. And I, I am heartbroken. You dumbass. Yeah, I, my God. I, I mean, if I, if you, I mean, you should have just take, you should have walked up to her even after the purchase was made. And has taken that celery and thrown it on the ground where it belonged and stepped on it and said, you march your old ass over to the Hodeckers and get some of that good celery. She had grabbed it. And when you split it in half and it was a rubbery, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't said, break. That's not the crack <laughs> of a piece of Hodecker celery, ma'am. You're, da you're darn right. Boy. What a rookie mistake. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it must have been her first day. She must be she must be uh, like a Leesport auction uh person or something. It must have been her first day at Rooks. I tell you, she can go back to the Green Dragon market if she's gonna act like that. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with Green Dragon. No, 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 we're not uh, oh, we're not it's that. inferior. You say it. I'll say it. I ain't never been there a day in my life. It's inferior. Uh Ryan. How you doing? There we go. I uh, I don't want to follow Mark. I don't have a story to tell. <laughs> That's okay. My, my week was boring. Um, much like Tim, I'm I'm at a deficit. Um, I don't have anything great to drink, but I will be drinking from this wonderful Poland Springs bottle of water. Is it vodka? Is it water? We don't know. It could be you anything. You say Moland. Uh, that, that's 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 that is the Poland Spring. Oh, I thought you said Molen Spring. Not the Molen Spring. That's a different bottle of water. No, that's the uh, that that's the spring that that goes right by Green Dragon, the Molen Spring. <laughs> the Molen uh, Springs. <laughs> but uh, no, okay. I hope everybody's uh, having a good uh, having a good week. Uh, I'm having a good week, uh, a, a, especially since yesterday about noontime. Things just have felt a little better. Um, Did you finally get that big poop out. I did. I did. It, it felt great. I felt like I've been trying to get that toxin out of me for like four years, uh, give or take. It wasn't that bad. Everybody relax. <laughs> I all thought right, you got your W-2s. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. On this day. We are looking at uh, January 21st in pro wrestling history. We have two birthdays today. Uh, Polish power Ivan Putski. Uh, was born today in 1941 and uh, forever in the good place, Maurice 
uh, was born today in 1983. Uh, then we jump back to 1990. On this day. WWF held their third annual Royal Rumble pay-per-view from the Orlando Arena in Orlando, Florida in front of 16,000 fans. The tagline for this show was every man for himself. The show featured five matches and saw Hulk Hogan win the Royal Rumble match by last eliminating Mr. Perfect. Can, can I say something real quick about the yeah, yeah, 90 yeah. Rumble? Sure. Well, I remember I almost had my parents convinced to buy it. And they said, no, 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 until we heard the tagline, every man for themselves. And that, See? That, See? that's what got them to buy it. See, that, that's why they put those taglines there. They went all in. They couldn't get them to get on the phone with the cable operator fast enough. I'm sure they couldn't. Uh, 1996, WWF held their ninth annual Royal Rumble pay-per-view from the Selland Arena in Fresno, California, in front of 9,600 fans. Uh, the tagline for this show is, Welcome to the Dark Side, live on pay-per-view. Uh, Shawn Michaels won the Royal Rumble match by last eliminating Diesel, and the show was main evented uh, with The Undertaker defeating wwf champion bret hart by disqualification uh see now that one only 9600 fans tagline probably could have been better uh on that show just uh, been a lot better that was brutal that was a bad one that was <laughs> oh. absolutely a bad one then we go to uh 1997 on this day. wcw held clash of champions 34 from the wisconsin center arena in milwaukee wisconsin the show featured nine matches and was headlined by lex luger defeating scott hall with Kevin Nash and six by DQ. On this day. 2001, WWF held their 14th annual Royal Rumble pay-per-view from the New Orleans Arena in New Orleans, Louisiana, in front of 17,137 fans. The tagline for this one was 30 men, every man for himself, one victor. So literally the rules of the Royal Rumble. Uh, the show featured five matches uh, and was main evented by Stone Cold Steve Austin, last eliminating Kane to win the Royal Rumble match. On this day. 2006, uh, Pepper Parks defeats John Moxley in a tournament for the vacant, uh, tournament final for the vacant Heartland Wrestling Association heavyweight title in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then in 2008, On this day. WWE holds their Royal Rumble go home edition of Monday Night Raw from the Hampton Coliseum in Hampton, Virginia. It is the first wwe show to air in hd i was there you were there first match in hd was i think mr kennedy versus Shawn michaels i believe that's right because i you yeah. know I, I, when I was i was there for the first the hd raw it was very interesting um i remember you, you saw it in very hd i saw it in super <laughs> h super duper hd um i remember that specifically a lot of people wore red because the when HD first came out, they were like, oh, red is the best color for HD. It just pops so much. And if you notice, like Mark had Mark Henry had red gear and just all the big dudes started wearing red. It was it was weird. That's that's interesting. But those are the items. On this day. January 21st in pro wrestling history. Uh, again, if you're following along live video, just uh, interact with us and, and give us a like and a share. We'd appreciate it. We saw Devin in here, Charlie, Scotty, uh, James, Jason. Uh, so welcome in, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're obviously getting closer to the uh, the Royal Rumble. And uh, once again, we have a three count question of the week. Uh, just, this, I just now realized I, I kept hearing this noise. I wasn't sure what it was. It's Mark's beard on the uh does anybody else hear that i hear it i just yeah it sounds I, like somebody stacking poker chips at like <laughs> i was like who the f and tim's hand i don't know if it was a, a fucking slinky underneath <laughs> his desk and i just realized now what it was but the whole time you're doing like the on this day shtick i was like i just couldn't picture what it was but it, it's it's Mark. I would that's never sound... I would never play with my slinky under the table. I was gonna say that's the sound it makes when Tim juggles his marbles. No, that uh, goes slinkies go down steps. <laughs> now, Mark, it's a different uh head headpiece you have on this week. Do you not have the normal headset or did it break? No, I um I forgot to charge it up and I'm afraid it wouldn't last through the whole uh the whole show. So I wanted to uh, be professional. How big is your beard this week? Oh, it's still uh I didn't do anything to it. So it's pretty put your, uh, put your hand behind it so the people at home think my god 
It's so ridiculous. I love it. <laughs> now, this like this is the first time we've seen you with a beard of of really this length. It was are you just is it just because of the pandemic? You're like, screw it, I'm just gonna not shave. Yeah, it was it's a pandemic beard for sure, because I wear a mask all day at work and uh I just let it grow. And now when I put the mask on, it looks like the beard is uh fake because it sticks out underneath. <laughs> Shit. It's not one, like one of those Santa Claus masks where it's the mask with the fake beard attached to it. That's what it looks like. It's, <laughs> it's great. Are you trying to start cosplaying as Zeb Coulter for cameo or something? Well, I could I could be uh, Zeb Coulter. Uncle Zeb. There you go. All right. Um, but our, our keep question... the microphone away. All right. <laughs> Do your best. That's exactly. Exactly what it is. I mean, honest to God, I thought it was somebody stacking poker chips. <laughs> I couldn't hear it. That's that's great. <laughs> uh, so our, our question this week: uh, If you could change one Royal Rumble match, the the the, the winner of a Royal Rumble match in history, which one uh, would you so choose? Is there anybody that wants to uh, go first? Yes, Ryan. Which one did Bret Hart win? <laughs> Oh, the 1994 on one. Yeah, 94. No, that's a silly answer. I don't need to go first. That, that was well, I mean, you have, the, you have the attention of the class, so why don't you go first? Fine, I go back to... Tim, do you want to go first? <laughs> I will. Um, I feel like I just had this conversation um, not too long ago, actually. Um, I think I might have said it here on the podcast, but... The 1995 Royal Rumble, um, WrestleMania 11. It all, it's all kind of spawned around Owen Hart and the program with Brett, where we had the conversation where Owen should have been WWE champion. Um, yeah, I, yeah, we point. had this conversation. I don't, I, yeah, I, yeah. To refresh. In this whole storyline, Owen Hart wins the WWE title from Brett at SummerSlam in the cage. Then you have the blow off at Survivor Series where Owen gets his team and Brett gets his team. Then Brett wins the 1995 Royal Rumble by himself. And you can still get to literally every other match at, Re at WrestleMania 11 with Brett as champion with the main event I being... Love it. Brett versus Owen, but you still get to do Diesel versus Sean. You get to do everything else. This poor Yokozuna doesn't have a tag partner, but you could do the British Bulldog. But the sure. Bulldog was team. No, I don't know. Because Bulldog opened with Luger against the Blue, the Eternal Bad Place Hall of Famers, the Blue Brothers. Um. So either way. But, but like, I mean, they were all they, they they were all like Bulldog and and Yakazuma and Owen Hart. They were still like in the Cornet family at that point, right? Not then, no. So oh, they were just Bulldog don't. was still a face, if I remember right. WrestleMania eleven because it opened with the I think they were called the Allied Powers at that point because it was Luger in the USA. Yeah, Luger and and uh, British oh, Bulldog that's right. that's as the right. Allied Powers. I guess the net, they weren't the Cornet family until the next one. Yeah, they weren't Cornet family until much later. So even then, like, oh, the Smoking Guns don't have a tag team part or a tag team. To I, mean, I feel do. like there was there was quite a few tag teams back then. And you so. could even still do Brett versus Bob, or not Brett Bob Backlund. But you could still do I Quit. You don't bring in Bob Backlund. Oh, oh man, everybody misses Bob Backlund. Everybody missed him so much. He needed to come for WrestleMania, but. My choice, you take a WrestleMania victory away from Shawn Michaels and you give it to Bret Hart. Not because I don't like Shawn Michaels. I just feel like Bret should have a singles one and it would have done something for Owen Hart as well. So Bret Charlie's at WrestleMania, so you want to elevate it. I get it. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Charlie says this watermelon, watermelon Mountain Dew is legit. Ryan. I know you don't like change, but do you know anything about this? Nope, nope. I when I wouldn't touch a Mountain Dew in my uh, current uh, eating situation. Are I've you, only had are one you soda free right now. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously sitting here, but what have you, are, are you, have you cut out soda completely? Uh, not completely. No, I, I'll do it on, on like the weekend. Very good. I've wow. only had one soda since New Year's. Wow. Good. Which is crazy. I have had sweet tea, but okay. I feel like it's a different kind of, different kind of sugary drink than. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to go next? Tim put way too much thought into his. So before anybody else gives a, like a real answer and felt thought about it much more than I did, because I didn't know about the question until right before we went on air. That's not true. Uh, I would go That's back to true. that is the truth. Uh, you can listen to the pre-show post show, which Jim's probably didn't record this time. Right? No, I definitely recorded. I oh, definitely recorded. Oh, this. Maybe you did. I don't know. I would go back to 2018 uh, and I would have Brie Bella eliminate Oscar and she would win the first ever women's royal rumble was brie bella even in that one she was don't act like you didn't know it because i know it came down to oscar and, and yeah and, and booby bella was in there too yep she'd have tossed out booby bella as well <laughs> uh matt or mark do either one of you want to go next sure was it, I, uh... was... oh, go ahead Sorry, matt. I, was gonna, I was just going to ask if eva marie was in the women's rumble she was training then. She was, training. she was, yeah, she was still training with, with Spanky at that point. Okay. <laughs> Matt, go ahead. Uh, I went back to 2011, the 40 man Royal Rumble. Um, I did I not it. away from Alberto Del Rio for multiple reasons. The main one being that he's a gigantic piece of shit, but also that, you know, when I went back, like when I got back into wrestling, um, I was like, why the hell did they have him win this? Um, so I'm giving that victory to CM Punk and setting up CM Punk versus Edge at WrestleMania as Edge's retirement match, knowing what we know now. Very good. Uh, Mark, which one would you change? I think the year was 2014. Oh, hi, Mark. Hello there. But I, it was the one where... Uh, Batista came back and won after being away from uh, the WWE for a yeah, few years. Yeah, that'd be 14. Great choice. And he he had no business, and then I mean no business, winning that Royal Rumble. And the fans certainly let him know that that night. And uh, that's the one where they put Daniel Bryan in for the triple threat match at WrestleMania. And Because yes, this- CM Punk took his ball and went home not because batista got booed at the rumble let's talk let's let's not rewrite all the history punk everybody's favorite that girl everybody's favorite hot girlfriend said you're ugly and your pee-pee's too small i'm leaving and then we clamored for cm punk for nine years does the mute button only work for me Yes, actually. Well, it if does. y'all I've, keep, I've, if y'all I've tried, stop I've tried using on it on the other guys, and it just, it just doesn't work. For some reason, it just doesn't work. Y'all keep blaspheming on Batista like he don't belong. I don't <laughs> say anything about Batista. He's a guardian of the galaxy. That's true. He, he who'd that you he, ever he, save the world from? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, on the the positive side with Batista winning that, we got Batista. Then later, Blue Tista out did. of it, so it, it wasn't all bad. <laughs> None of that would have happened without that Royal Rumble. Uh, Charlie says, uh, take away Batista. He says in 16. Was it 16? No, that was 14. It was definitely 14. 14. Yeah, it was 14. Definitely 14. But he's, he's WrestleMania 30. Yeah, he's talking the same year. Scotty says he would change the 1999 Royal Rumble 16, winner. I think 16 was one versus all. Yeah, would have been. Was the it one Triple been. H one? Yeah. Yeah. Triple you want to talk about a guy who shouldn't have won a Royal Rumble? That, that was my. That was my runner up. Okay, now, I now did the, have an honorable mention. Now the mute button did work for Tim. That's weird. <laughs> if, you, if you blaspheme against the game, the mute button actually does work. AJ Styles, I think, easily could have won that one, and it would have done a, a whole lot for for AJ. I don't think Triple H needed yeah. to win that one. That he was my runner up. Um. And then Scotty says, hot take, AJ Lee was better than CM Punk. Um, I mean, you can think that. It looks you, better, sure. I, yeah, but I mean, you can be you can be wrong as well, at least to me. I, I But uh, the, the one I would change is I would change 2017 
um, instead of Randall Orton winning, I would actually have Goldberg win the Royal Rumble. Mute yourself. No, no, no. Just, I know. Just hold on. Hold on. I would have Goldberg win the Royal Rumble because if he wins the Royal Rumble, that means he can't go to Fastlane, Ryan's favorite uh, pay-per-view. Where's the goddamn sound? There it is. Tim. Fastlane. Okay, so he can't go me, to me. Fastlane. <laughs> me, me. And, and he can't win the Universal title. Uh, so Kevin Owens would still be Universal Champion come WrestleMania. And then whichever title Goldberg wanted to uh, challenge for at WrestleMania, obviously I would have him lose the match as well. So Goldberg wins a Royal Rumble, but he doesn't take a title away from anybody. Because if he doesn't win, then he goes to fast lane me, me. and wins the universal title from Kevin Owens, which we do not want to happen. How do you feel about fast lane coming back this year? We'll talk about that later, but yes, fast lane me, me. Uh, is coming back. I know Ryan, I think I just saw his camera rise up a little bit. So I know, I know he's very excited. He's been this excited since great balls of fire. <laughs> <laughs> Never saw it coming. <laughs> I just, I hate all of this. You know what? I got you one better. Shane McMahon. The best in the world. I can't even enjoy it. Hey, that's the beauty. <laughs> can't even smile about this <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome oh man okay charlie uh charlie amended his he 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 misspoke uh he he meant roman but roman didn't win the rumble in 16 charlie charlie you gotta you gotta check your facts brother you mean 16, 15 15 i think is the one you were thinking about the uh, one in philly and that was the, this is my yard right that was him or the next day was no this is my no. yard now was him beating the undertaker and beating taker i'm sorry he was when he went on to face brock at uh where rollins cashed in and then of course the next year was triple h won the title lost it to roman then the next year uh was where he went Let's see, Scotty says, can you add, uh, you should add Bernie sitting to J uh, Shane jumping off the hell in a cell. Yeah, the uh, the Bernie memes are, uh, have been very good oh, today. So uh, good. Uh, those have been, uh, those have been a blast. Um, but uh, continue along the Royal Rumble theme. Obviously, next week we will predict uh, this year's Royal Rumble. Um, but I've seen a lot of people and, and because there's some superstars that are just declaring that they're in the match there are others like ricochet who have to earn their way in uh, which i feel like it's kind of been this way most years um but like i've seen a lot of people mad about the way that that they're determining how people get into the royal rumble match like what 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 manner would you have people you know entrants get into the royal rumble match like are you fine with them just declaring i'm in should a certain number have to win their way in like how, how should entrants get into the royal rumble match anyone mm, well it would be great if you know there were like two shows and or, or there was a set number of shows that was equally divisible to the number of rumble participants and then just give maybe like a set of numbers to one show and a set of numbers to the other show. And then if there's like, I don't know, an authority figure on each show that could give those opportunities out to maybe their top, stars and then you know maybe have qualifying matches for a set number i don't know i'm spitballing here 
Does that make any sense at all? But I mean, Tim, there's only there's only 30 spots in the Rumble and okay. there's only three shows. Mm-hmm. How does. Oh, it's almost like math. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think that's a I think that's a solid idea, because then theoretically you could have your. What's you, the you, third show? 205 Live, right? Uh, I, was talking, UK. I was talking main event. I don't know about anybody else, but that's fair. <laughs> Superstars <laughs> main event. They're actually going to pull from AEW Dark. There's so many matches over there. Gonna, gonna, well, are we going back to a 60 man Royal Rumble now? Or? I don't know, man. Sean Dean, he can, the captain. <laughs> um, no, I kind of like that idea. I think that's uh, that's a solid one. The only. Uh, the only issue I could see by doing that would be uh, the surprise entrance, whether it's a legend or whoever. But you wouldn't have to give all 10 slots out. Maybe you did eight per show. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think, yeah, obviously, because you, you want some of those surprises, be it legends, be it returns, whatever. So, I mean, even if you do, you know, eight for smackdown eight for raw five for NXT. I mean, I, that, that puts you at like 21 that leaves nine for uh you know kind of last minute entries surprise entries stuff like that i mean i think you know because yeah i will admit that it it is somewhat strange and maybe this year we're all some some people have been a little bit more critical of others because we all have more time on our hands than normal like just because like the whole women's division seems to just be declaring themselves in most of the men's division but then adam pierce is like ricochet uh uh-uh you have to go out and win some matches first. And it seems to be like he's he's one of the only uh only guys that um kind of is is in is in that boat. So it has been a little strange, I will admit that. But I I, I don't I'm trying to remember how back in in the nineties, early two thousands, how how they determined guys getting was it just didn't they used to have a big roller cage? Oh, that's right. They did. That's how they did numbers. Yeah. That's how they determined like what. Oh, 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 oh to enter. Already. Oh, okay. So I mean, they could still do something like that. They could also do like if you've won a match at a pay per view since the previous Royal Rumble, you're automatically entered into the Royal Rumble. Okay. Yeah, that's something. Um, Scotty says, "Bring back the forty man Rumble." Yeah, I mean, I'd there's obviously there's obviously enough talent, um, you know, uh, under contract right now, and and obviously bring back some of the legends too. And when we're not in a pandemic, you have UK talent and stuff like that. So there's definitely. And Marcus had a really great idea that every fourth year, kind of like leap year, you have the leap rumble, which is your forty man rumble. So, oh. you know, That'd it makes right. sense. I but, like that. Yeah, you know. I like that. I like that. And so I feel, not- I also feel that one rumble every so often needs to be for the WWE title. Yeah, I mean we've we've had that. You gotta make wrinkles, man. Wrinkles. You know, because was it just ninety two and uh, the Triple H one? Were those the only one? No, Vince. No, Vince it was not ninety two. Ninety two was for the vacant title. And uh, 2016 was Roman defending the title. But those are the yeah, only but... two times that the titles, the winner of the Royal Rumble was also the champion. How did Vince end up with the title again? He beat Triple H. Okay. I knew it was like a round it Rumble. It was on like cut. a SmackDown. Okay. But I feel like it was around uh, ringsiders checking in here from uh, from Nevada. And uh, Colby watching as well. So I heard Nevada is beautiful this time of year. Uh, it's probably warmer, at least in parts of Nevada, than it is here. Probably. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'd certainly have no issues with the 40-man rumble every now and again. I would, Jim, I would go back to what I said. I would just put every superstar and select legends into a hopper and turn it. And it's all the work anyway. But at least that gives you the presentation to the fans that this is how we're determining it this year. And you just pull people. You don't even have to show anybody. You just pull the name, you show them writing it down. And, and that's, that's how you do one through 30, one through 40, whatever it, whatever it may be. You mean to tell me that this isn't legitimate? The 
all of the action is very real. It's the forming of the of the L- list. Is listen, not- r- listen, Ryback. We're not going to take that attitude from you. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> uh, Jason says, "I have no idea where we are. I just got on, so let me jump in here and say AEW is trash." Well, Sounds like Royal Rumble talk. So we're we're uh, we're we're caught up to speed, Jason. Well done. Um, any any other thoughts to uh, determining Royal Rumble entrance before we move on? You know, they could do uh, a tag team lethal lottery like WCW used to do, and then they all, the winners of that go into the Rumble. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that would take take up a good bit of the pay per view. But there, there's definitely creative ways you can do it. And I mean, you don't have to do that for every single superstar that gets in. You could have a certain number of spots to declare. Uh, and, and I mean, you could get creative with the use of, social media or the wwe network where uh starting the first of the year you know it's it's like open declaration time and you know the first so many superstars to declare i mean i i mean there's obviously just infinite ways you can get creative with it it's just a matter of of them actually doing that (laughs) uh so so we'll see if anything changes um next year or anything like that um last weekend uh the the announcement officially rolled out it was something that was rumored for a while that wrestlemania this year is officially uh moved from sofi stadium in california to uh back to tampa bay at raymond james stadium once again this year it will be uh two nights saturday april the 10th sunday april the 11th uh, next year, WrestleMania 38 will be in uh, Arlington at AT&T Stadium on Sunday, April the 3rd, 2022. And then they will finally get the Hollywood WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania 39, Sunday, April the 2nd, 2023 at uh, SoFi Stadium and Hollywood Park. So um, not a huge surprise. I mean, California has been one of the most, uh, you know, progressive states as it comes to shutdowns and things like that. So the, the, the possibility that WrestleMania was going to be there was, was getting slimmer and slimmer uh, by the week. Uh, and it was just a matter of time before this became official. And if any state's open for business, Florida is most certainly open for business. So uh, two nights they expect uh, somewhere, I, I read b- anywhere between 20 uh, and 25,000 fans uh, in attendance. Um, uh, both nights, I think that's, if you can do the math, it's probably why it's two nights. So you can get 50,000 ticket sales instead of 25 <laughs> um, in, in a limited capacity. Um, so it, it kind of brought, brought the question into my mind. If you are, if you're holding the book and now you have two nights uh, of WrestleMania this year, both expected, I think I read as well to be around three hours, which I think feels, feels pretty good. Um, w- if, if you can put a match main event of each show what uh what match do you put on uh for each night and if anybody wants to uh take the take the take the reins here feel free or i can go first it doesn't matter i will uh, i'll go uh so night one i feel like you you want to make a a pretty decent splash building up to this wrestlemania scotty I'll, i'll hit your question here in a second um i would get ronda rousey back in the mix um i would have ronda rousey uh challenge at charlotte flair um get the raw women's title on charlotte sometime between now and wrestlemania have ronda rousey return at the royal rumble win the royal rumble and uh and face charlotte flair one-on-one uh for the raw women's title uh and then my night two main event is uh is have Big E because i thought uh, back in the fall, I thought this is where we were going. Doesn't necessarily look like it at this point, um, but I would have Big E uh, challenge Roman Reigns for the Universal title. So those are my two main events uh, for WrestleMania this year. So is this what we want to happen, or what? If you, if you happen? if you were were picking the if you were booking the show. What what matches would you put main eventing each night? Oh, you need to be more specific with these questions, Jim. I feel like I I, I feel like I, I I feel like I didn't I didn't get any of this. 
Oh my goodness. Uh, good. <laughs> Tim, I think you had your hand up. I feel like you you understood the question. There's a couple of us you can think better on our feet. I'm one of them. I'll take it. Thank Ryan, you. keep gearing. Are you want me to think on my Don't feet? Don't make me yeah. say Shane McMahon again. I'll say Shane McMahon again. You have two Royal Rumbles, both winners, main events. That's simple. There it is on my feet. There you go. Well, who wins what? I didn't think that. What do you mean, who wins what? Who wins? Brie, Brie Bella wins. <laughs> so and I can't say the other guy's name. <laughs> oh, damn it. I hit the wrong one. I meant to hit this one. What a sad day. <laughs> um, but uh, if I'm if I'm picking my main event, uh, night one is for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns will defend against the winner of the Men's Royal Rumble, Daniel Bryan. I like that. And uh, for night two, um, it will be uh, Becky Lynch, the winner of the Women's Royal Rumble, taking on Charlotte Flair. I like that as well. Um, Ryan, this is the exact question as it was posted to our page. With yesterday's announcement of two night WrestleMania in Tampa this year, what match should main event each night of this year's event? So to me, so the universal champion and the men's Royal rumble winner and the women's championship and the women's Royal rumble winner. Okay. I don't understand. I didn't know I had to plug in people. Yeah, owning the book, having the I mean, pencil, none of that came up in I mean, the discussion. I mean, you could, you don't. I don't know to. why you get this way. I'm not forcing you to do that, but I mean, we're unbelievable. I, but I and mean, stick tight. A little later, we're gonna see how well these two guys know each other in a game called Know Your Bro. Yeah, apparently yeah. not great. <laughs> There's a lot of fighting. Um, how long, have Daddy? We known why each other is Daddy too? fighting with Daddy? Uh, I went, so did we know each middle other school? in middle school? So I think it was like seventh, eighth grade. So that would have to be 98, Ugh, like 97, 98. So, I mean, it's, it's been like 25 years. That's unreal. That, that we've known each other. I'm willing to bet. I get no questions. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I am a shit friend. I will own that. <laughs> it's uh, it's 10 questions. There's a few that I may not get right uh, with you. Oh, you feel confident about this? I, I feel like I should at least get six right. Oh, Jesus Christ. I feel like I should at least get six. I'll, I'll put my cap at eight. I think there's two that I that I Ooh. may not get. I might get two. <laughs> and th that just proves the that I am the better friend. So we will we will prove that as well. Tonight. I won't argue that one bit. Uh, I will get naked though for your picture. <laughs> Patreon.com slash three count Thursday. So you can understand that reference. He'd get um, naked for your podcast. I mean there you go. Right there, now. Let's... It comes the shirt. See, you keep threatening it, but you never do it. Uh, <laughs> there it goes. Oh, no. <laughs> Too late for the music. Oh, you. I'm just sitting here like a weirdo without my shirt on. Now it's sexy. It looks, it looks like At it's cold it over weird. there, too. <laughs> yeah, Very you, cold. Do you have your window open? Now it's sexy. I do. I do. I always have my window open. <laughs> With Stone Cold Steve Austin just looking at him like a weird scene from WWE <laughs> Studios presents Brokeback Mountain. It's really my weird. Eyes are up, my eyes are up here. Man, your back <laughs> oh is so God. huge. What? <laughs> I want to caress it. What? Good Ryan, how, you, how are you keeping a tan in January? That's what I want to know. I have uh, nice olive color complexion. I got to give that to my father. <laughs> that, that came from his seat. Now I you want to give it to your father? What? That's not. Nope. There we go. <laughs> I'm a young oh, guy. My. Oh, I thought I was I'm getting something else. Guy. There I'm it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm a sausage guy. <laughs> Scotty I don't sound like that. Do I? Do I really sound like that? I mean, that's yeah. literally your voice. This is you, <laughs> and this is you. I'm a sausage guy. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I didn't pitch up, pitch down. Nothing. I hate this fucking podcast so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is Tim. 
I mean, this is kind of Tim. Sauce it. Um, That's not me. I mean, well, you're right, it, it, but it's a guy that kind of sounds That's like Jim you. Ross. Johnny Ace is a piece of shit. That's Jim Ross, man. This is definitely Tim. Oh. No. Oh, no, that is you. Shame. That's Ryan. Uh, that's sausage that's guy Ross. Ryan. That's the Undertaker, I thought. No, uh, that one is this. <laughs> See? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> See? It's about the same. Uh, Matt or Mark, do either one of you want to go next? I forget what the question was, Jim. Uh, who, what match? <laughs> was it The Undertaker what? or me? That was the question. What match at main event each uh, each night oh, of WrestleMania? That's this right. Week? Mark, um, you, we'll go to you next. We'll let Matt close this one. I, I think uh, night two should have uh, the women's championship match. And whoever Goldberg's facing should be on night two because you want people to watch night one. <laughs> if, if Goldberg's on night one, if people see that they're not going to tune in the night two. So no, no. The tagline for night two is Goldberg's not wrestling tonight. Oh well, there that, you go. That's how you get him to watch. That's is a good tagline. A, I'd appreciate that one. He could be at the NXT takeover. The, the non-existent one. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I think the men's. Uh, Royal Rumble winner, whatever championship he was to take on should be night one and uh, night two, the women's championship. I don't know specifically who uh, Roman Reigns is probably going to be in the main event. And I could totally see Becky Lynch coming back for the women's title. So that would be exciting. Ryan, Devin, Devin here in the comments says he wants you to take your shirt back off. Devin freaking what? <laughs> um, Tell him uh, slide some money to Patreon. I'll show more. There you go. <laughs> um, www.onlyfans.com slash three count Thursday. Oh my. God. <laughs> Taking requests. Um, Matt, uh, what matches would you have? Um, it's certainly not possible with how the rosters are broken up, but I would still love to see the fatal four-way between the four horsewomen as a main event on one of the nights uh, returning Becky, Charlotte, Sasha, and Bailey For the belt, um, I guess it would be the SmackDown one since one of them actually has that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the men's, I don't know, um, Roman versus Goldberg. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that could happen. Let's let's cheer up the new age insiders. There, <laughs> let's give them that main event. There you go. Let's let's throw them that. But you're you're very charitable, Matt. I appreciate <laughs> that uh, about you. Um, what if Jay wins the Royal Rumble? How great would that match be? Amazing. Um, Scotty, as long as, as, long as we have a special guest. Cow thrower. For oh my God! Will you well. get over that, man? <laughs> that was so 2020. <laughs> We're in new times oh. now. I want Joe Biden already be... signed a presidential order pardoning the Jimmy Uso towel throwing. It was in. <laughs> it was in the other 13. It he was... pardoned the bad acting. I want the animated 2020 to pin our truth for the 24 seven title oh at God. some point at WrestleMania. I hope <laughs> that could happen too. That's, that's I, I hope, I hope that the, that the, uh, the animated uh, 2020 is uh, entrant in the Royal rumble. I really do. Just for Ryan, just for Ryan. Um, you, you know, there is a, a possibility now that Trump is uh, no longer president that he could take the 24 seven title at WrestleMania. Oh God. I just, hold on. I have breaking news. Hold on. Uh, wait, not there. Right. Uh, following suit of all other forms of social media, the WWE network has also banned Donald Trump. <laughs> Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> uh i feel like that those don't hurt as much anymore i they for some reason it, it's almost like we don't have to care anymore um you scotty just said, not cared at all at the first place Tim, are, you, are you i can't are you joking 
Yes. They. Oh, <laughs> I, I I didn't know. I, I was surprised know. You that think the McMahons you, would do that. I really they would wouldn't. absolutely not. I, that's why I was surprised. How long until face value. How long until Linda McMahon's back on TV? That's a good question. Whoa. Yeah, um, is, I mean, is Trump banned in China? Uh, she's I, dead. I don't. I don't uh, China. I'm not sure. Uh, Scotty Jesus. says since no takeover in night one, he would have uh, Demon Finn versus Karrion Cross. Night two, Goldberg versus Reigns. You know, I, I might I might not watch WrestleMania if that happens. <laughs> dropkick, <laughs> painted dropkick, dropkick Murphy and Scarlet's beef. No thanks. Um, that's Scarlet though. <laughs> Scotty says. JK I don't know if she's wearing that weird thorns nest thing on her face. What? Like yeah, what was Wednesday. that all about? That was, uh, boy, that was something. That's, that was that's, a choice. That's almost as bad as chicks with bull ring piercings in their nose. I, I that's a, oh. I'm a hard out on that. A, bo- a booger catcher. Yeah, a door knocker <laughs> on their nose. I don't like it. Tim, um, I think you offended both women that listened to us. I'm very sorry. <laughs> You're lovely women. I, I, it's a personal preference. It has. It's not indicative of you as a person. I think you're amazing, ladies. Um, Scotty says Jake can't win a match. He's not winning the Rumble. And Charlie says Otis will win the Rumble. Uh, I mean, I, it would just give us more excuse to. Ah, oh, yes. Chucky. Oh, yes, Chucky. We have our top suspect. Tomato chips. There, you go. there we go. <laughs> uh, I do have Chucky. to say, I love. Mandy Rose's short hair. Oh, absolutely. Speaking Infinite, of speaking infinitely of so much better. Greater than long hair. It just yes. 100%. just seeing just seeing Mandy Rose's short hair just makes me think of uh Donald Duck. Donald Duck. <laughs> Donald okay. Duck. You're unbelievable. What? I don't I don't Daffy, Daffy, whichever one it is. Da- what? I don't I whichever I, one. Oh, a da- I think you're talking about Daffy yeah, Duck. Yeah, Daffy Duck. It makes me think of yeah, Daffy Duck. Yeah, okay, that makes sense now. If you know, you know. I don't appreciate yeah, that. Say I'm missing something. I think uh, only Devin, the five of us know. Devin says Donald Trump wins the Royal Rumble. Devin, if I could mute you. <laughs> Let me see. What, what type of moderation powers do I have? Oh, I could mute him for 15 minutes. Do you want me to mute him for 15 oh, minutes? No, no, oh, no, 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 but... I could do that, worse. Uh, I'm going to, you know, as, as Twitter, as Twitter has done to many a Trump publican, Devin, this is your warning. Don't, don't abuse the system. <laughs> Daffy um, Duck. What are you? Yeah. Yeah. Daffy Duck. Yeah. You're out of here. Nope. Yeah. You guys, you guys, you, you guys are crazy. You guys are missing the whole joke. There's no You're joke missing. to be seen. Clearly. Oh, I, there's I, a joke. The, uh, the group messenger. Yeah. I don't know. I'm oh I got it. See? Got it. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. If I'll think- tell you during the break. Come in my face. All right. Speaking of which, let's take that break. Let's hear from our sponsors right now. Uh and, and we will be back. We will be back and we will play Know Your Bro. Uh we will talk uh re- WWE pay-per-views and hit our news and rumor roundup. Stick with us, three count Thursday live. Recount Thursday is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website arenaeats.app, that's arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre order, express pickup, and in seat delivery. How do you place your order? You're listening to NGSC Sports Radio. Hear us live on NGSCSports.com, where you can get awesome analysis on all things sports. Or check out our podcast on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, and much more. For our latest videos, subscribe to NGSC Sports YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at NGSC Sports and like us on Facebook. NGSC Sports. We never stop. (laughs) 
Welcome back, Three Count Thursday. We are live here on Thursday night, January twenty first, twenty twenty one. Uh, saw this in Ryan. Were you weren't making fun of me? Were you there? Were you guy? No, I thought I thought I caught something out of my eye. Uh, I saw this uh, tonight um, at uh, at nine twenty one. It will be the uh, 21st minute of the 21st hour of the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century. So pretty cool if you're into those weird little factoids like that. Bummer, uh, it's not the 20 second soundbite for yourself, please. Uh, this one? I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, the nerd one. Oh, uh, uh, no, I don't think I have a nerd one. I have this one. Boring. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just thought, you know, I throw it out there. Um, we get to spend it together. That's exciting. That is, we do, what, 19 we minutes. do get to, uh, to spend it together. So, And I think we're probably going to be spending it together whilst playing a brand new game uh so uh so let's hit it tim i, I think you're gonna host the game here nope you mute yourself can't hear you i'm here you bet turn it up can't hear it in my headphones there it is welcome back to three count thursday game night i'm your host and we've got two best friends here willing to put it all on the line against one another in a, a rousing game of Know Your Bro. Uh, it is played much like the newlywed game. Uh, our, our contestants, uh, first, in the box directly above me, you know him as the host of Three Count Thursday, the host of the Huddle Up podcast, the host of of discussions with a nobody at Big Jim Sports himself. Big Jim, how are you? I'm doing great, Tim. Fan damn tastic. And his contestant above me and to the right. You've heard him do commentary for multiple wrestling promotions, such as Pro Wrestling Empire, Atomic Championship Wrestling, and so much more. Please welcome at RYN Eagle on the Twitter, Ryan. Ryan, how are you? Um, so good. Oh, perfect. I love to hear it. So, can we get production to cut that music? Sounds great. How are you, Wink? I'm great. So, we asked each of these gentlemen the same 10 questions. And they are going to answer the questions as if they were picking what they thought their best friend said. So, for example, if the question was, who is the worst female vocalist of all time? Jim, you would say that Ryan would have said Cheryl Crow. And Ryan, you would have said that Jim would have said also Cheryl Crow. And you both would have gotten a point. All right. See? See how that works? It's just that easy. It's just that easy. It can be that easy. Yeah. But these questions Could have been that easy. These Could questions aren't all layups, folks. So we have ourselves a handy dandy scoreboard. On the board. Ooh. Oh, that's exciting. We have a scoreboard live you've and out, in person. You've Sco outdone yourself, Tim. You know, I try my best. <laughs> so we oh. will go. I have them here on my uh, technological device. Wait, so before. Uh, if, if you guys had to guess Matt and, and Mark, who do you think will win this uh, this game? Yeah. Yep, Jim's going to take it. Oh, oh absolutely. <laughs> oh, I have zero faith in myself. Okay. I'll and be shocked if I get that, more than two. Okay. I'm going to double down. I, I, of this group, I think I've known Mark maybe the least amount of time. I could probably get more questions about Mark right than Ryan will get about Jim. We, we might, next week's we, episode. We can play Know Your Bro next week. I was going to say, I think we have to play Know Your Bro with you and Mark. 
to oh, test that'll be that fun. Theory. Okay. That right. Let's do it. I'm down. Cool. All right. Ten questions, starting with number one. Gentlemen, who would you say is your best friend's least favorite wrestler of all time? Jim, we will start with you. What is your best friend's least favorite wrestler of all time? Um, Bill Goldberg. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. Oh, that is not correct. Ryan, you said. I said that dumbass Mojo Raleigh. Oh, man. <clears throat> that, that, that was one of the ones rolling around in my head. I also was thinking Nicholas. Uh, <laughs> little, little Nicholas <laughs> former Raw Tag Team Champion. Yeah, so I, I had a few to pick from. I should have went with Nicholas. He should have. Uh, Ryan, same question to you. Who is your best friend's least favorite wrestler of all time? I feel like, and, and he may be working me on this. I'm going to go with Zack Ryder. The answer is incorrect. Jim, <clears throat> who did you say is your least favorite of all time? I honestly don't remember. I sent these answers in like six hours ago. Jim said Cameron. Don't you know who your least favorite oh. wrestler of all time is? Look, of course. I mean, I think Jim misunderstood the question. He said least favorite. <laughs> oh, that's not like not not, not most favorite most ever of all it. time. <laughs> I mean, these questions are already flawed. <laughs> all right, Boy, so we're Jason just roasted me in the comments. He goes, "Big Jim wins." Ryan so does not care. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> He's not. Well, we're here to prove differently. Question number two. Uh, what is, what would your best friend say is their favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, Ryan, uh, we will start with you. I am fairly confident in my answer that Jim would say mint chocolate chip. And that answer is correct. Ryan or Big Jim did say mint chocolate chip. Let's get Ryan on the, on the board. First blood over to Ryan. Big Jim, you can tie it here. What did your best friend? What would you say your best friend's favorite ice cream flavor is? Well, um, he's a pretty plain guy. He's he's a pretty <laughs> pretty status quo kind of guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say uh, vanilla is Ryan's favorite ice cream flavor. Uh, and that is incorrect. So sorry. Chocolate. Ryan, so the sorry. answer is. I, I love chocolate chip cookie dough. Jesus. That is absolutely my favorite ice cream. I just never eat ice cream around you. And if I'm more of a cheesecake guy. You are. You, you have never, I, we have never ordered ice cream in my presence. Never. And if games only went one quarter or one part of time. Ryan wins, but unfortunately, we've got eight more questions to go. Unfortunately for Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons, they do go longer than one quarter. That's very true. Question number three. If you if they won one million dollars, how much money would you say that your best friend would give you as a friendship gift? Big Jim, you're first. Um... Ten thousand dollars. Uh, Ryan was a little more charitable than that. He would break you off with a cool twenty five thousand mm. dollars. I mean, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, Ryan, same question to you. How much money do you think Big Jim would break you off if uh, he won a million dollars? Well, I originally wrote down 25,000 bucks too, but I might think differently now. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'll say that. I'll say $25,000. Well, Big Jim was also more charitable than you think. Uh, he would break you off with $50,000. Oh. And I would only give you 10, Jim. I'm not that really? tight. <laughs> Jim thinks he's five times the friend of you. <laughs> God, damn, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, question number four. Uh, what is your best friend's go-to diner order? Right. Uh, we start with Big Jim. Yeah, it's me now. Ryan. Go ahead. Good, Ryan. 
this was tough. We we frequented the diner a lot. Um, BBJ oftentimes brought Jim a uh, an American cheese omelet. So I will go with the American cheese omelet. Bonus point for a mint chip uh, milkshake. I will give you credit. I will give you the point. Uh, Big Jim. It. Big Jim said his order is a, a, an omelet, home fries, and coffee. But I wasn't the omelet, going to put just omelet. The omelet but... comes with home fries or whatever. Yeah. I was so. going to just put omelet too, but I felt like I needed to get a bit more specific. Yes, yeah, so, so I depending depending what time of day. Yeah, I would I would also add a milkshake there at some point. Is sometimes so Ryan on the board with two points. Big Jim, you got to catch up here. What uh, what is uh, Ryan's go to diner order? The thing that's tough about this one is there's literally one of there's three, three. There's three <laughs> options here. Um, but I, I feel like the one that, that he always kind of hovers back on is the uh, is the chicken croquettes. And, and then it has the mashed taters, the, the salad with the ranch, the red beet egg, corn nuggets, usually. And of course, Mountain Dew. And that is correct. Big Jim is on the board. Yes. Two to one. Jim, Jim could order the whole thing for me. He sure I, did. Like, I, 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 was, I wasn't sure if you were going to go patty melt. Uh, or there, there's like one other one. Sometimes you get that Western chicken thing. Yeah, the Western chicken or the meat lover's omelet. Yeah, yeah. There's very, like three or four. Very seldomly, very seldomly. Yeah, you do fall into an omelet, but but it's it's usually the croquette. Yeah, the croquettes for sure. When when was the last time you had those? It's been a bit. It's been Is a it? bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We are on to question number five. What would you what would what did your best friend say was their favorite band? Big Jim. Green Day. And the point goes to Big Jim. That is correct. That is correct. That one's easy. That one was easy. Ryan. I felt like this was a pretty easy layup here as well. Uh Big Jim's favorite band is Kiss. That is correct. Gotta sometimes you gotta shuffle in a couple easy ones. Yeah, yeah it's, sometimes it's you speed got to. changing in pitches. <laughs> I felt I felt good about that one. <laughs> Ryan still up three to two as we go to question number six. Uh, if your best friend could go anywhere in the world to visit, where would they go? Ryan, no fucking clue, no clue at all. <laughs> Get I it? said Jim is a Notre Dame fan, so I said I don't know Ireland. I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, Big Jim, you went Canada, the Great White North, somewhere you I, can I, drive. That makes I sense. Did, I did <laughs> almost put Notre Dame, but 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 Canada, Canada would probably would would win out. Uh, Big Jim, to you, I'm just gonna say the beach. Can you be more specific? Uh, Ocean City, Maryland. That's incorrect. Oh, damn it. <laughs> there was We're a hoping. bit of fantasy in uh, Ryan's uh, answer. Uh, he went with a, a place that is nothing but beaches, which is Hawaii. Mm. Who knew that Hawaii. anywhere in the world would be the time Ryan picks to do something different for a change? <laughs> yeah. Well, when it's a competition, then that's what it takes. I heard, I heard Bethany's beautiful this time of year. <laughs> We've been we've been to uh, Ocean City in January. Before. I love it. So nice. It Much is less traffic. Three to sure. two going on to question number seven. Uh, what did your best friend say was their spirit animal? Big Jim. Fucking sloth. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. <laughs> kind of. The smoky bear spirit animal. Uh, he went with. The dolphin. Okay, that makes sense. Beach, water, sun. I just figured something just lays around a bit. <laughs> uh, Ryan. Around. Ryan. Big Jim's spirit animal is? I went with the only animal I think Jim likes, and that's a dog. And you are correct, sir. Yes. Boy, this. If, you had, <laughs> if you had Ryan in the pool... Boy, you are you're picking your the, the odds the odds makers in yeah, Vegas. You are making money today. That sound you heard spooky. was the odds makers shooting themselves. <laughs> just 
boing. <laughs> it is four to two with three questions to go. Shit. Uh, I can't even hit the number that I said would be my minimum. Question number eight. Uh, what store did your best friend say that they could blow an entire paycheck in? Ryan, we'll start with you. I went specific here, and I probably shouldn't have done it. I went the Hershey Bears Pro Shop. That is very close. Oh. I would. <laughs> Big Jim went with the NHL shop. Ah, oh. right idea. Right idea. right idea. I was there. I was there. Um, you were in the ballpark. You were in the ice rink, but you were not. Uh, you were not at the same level of play. That uh, no offense to the Hershey Bears, but they are no capital. Oh, God, love them. Uh, schedule comes out tomorrow. AHL hey. starting up here soon. Uh, Big Jim, where could Ryan blow an entire paycheck? Do restaurants count? Um, no. <laughs> um. um I don't, the the WWE shop. That is incorrect. Uh, Ryan is a man with simple wants and simple needs. He went to. Jim, the... we we visit this place. God damn it, often, Walmart! <laughs> late at night, I could easily God, drop a whole paycheck there. Even in my, my fucking head, I'm going. There's no way this motherfucker is going to say Walmart. <laughs> so easy. God. He said Walmart. I sure <laughs> did. So. The best Big Jim can do is tie. Fuck me. Question number nine. What did your best friend say was their best quality? Big Jim. A uh, sense of humor. I'm sorry. I could have went there. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Ryan said that he his best quality is that he is a good listener. And he's proving it by knowing All you, you ever do is make jokes. <laughs> wow. How do you do you do you feel marginalized now as a friend that all you do is make I jokes? Mean, not all you do, but like not that's I feel not like that's your call card. In every, not at all. Like, I mean nope. and I feel like you get that from your family because when we talked about I'm not my, even hurt. my dead dog that died on Christmas, all that your dad could say was the Charlie in a box. He's a Charlie in cap. It's and I listened to you um sob about that dog in a box. You you Because <laughs> his name was Charlie. We got him I got it. That's I got it. Name. Charlie's in a box. In a box. Yeah. Did he have a yeah. hand crank? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. Not on the not <laughs> on the little not. box of ashes. We, we now, where is Charlie these days? Um we I actually buried him at, at the house here. Um, oh, nice, nice. We just never got around to doing it at, at either of at our other houses. So. Sure, that's good. At least he's uh, at your forever home. He is. He is good. Speaking of forever homes, uh, Ryan, what is Jim's best quality? I uh, I also said Jim is a great listener. Uh, I know we've spent many a times uh, unloading on each other. Not that way. Uh, um, <laughs> he is a sausage guy. <laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah, the end. Uh, listen, sausage guy. Uh, Big Jim uh, says no to that. Uh, Big that Jim uh, looks for the good in people. Except me, oh. apparently. <laughs> this one's for funsies. Ryan is the winner. Think of a better way to describe that than unload on each other? Really? Nope. Number 10. He just dumped hot loads on each other. Shut up. Number 10, what did your best friend say was their silliest fear? Ryan. This is an easy one. It is bats. <laughs> You're a fucking liar, Jim. <laughs> Jim that's not said, a silly fear. That's a legitimate fear. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fair. Jim said falling down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> see silly fear big jim silly fear. big jim for some sort of redemption what did ryan say was his biggest uh, silliest based fear? on the way he answered that question i'm gonna say bats yeah <laughs> yep that's it <laughs> i'll give you that one i'm fucking crying <laughs> falling down the stairs <laughs> 
Well, Big Jim definitely <laughs> fell down something. I he mean, had, apparently uh, did. This this this, this is Studio L's well, freaking well, treacherous. Matt, show. Matt, Mark thing didn't have a, a fucking handrail for how long? <laughs> Matt, your bar, your bar to set for next week is seven combined correct answers. You guys oh, have known each other good. for a cup of coffee. These guys have known each other since '98. They oh don't know God. anything about each other. The sad thing is, I, I, I'm almost willing to bet Matt and Mark do better on this one than we. Do. And that's oh, been the first it. episode of Know Your Bro. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> The comment section is so great. It has me crying. Unbelievable. Jim, you better effing rally. I apologize, Ryan, for saying you did not care. We can now see that Big Jim is just a handshaking politician <laughs> that makes people believe in his fakeness. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been Three Count Thursdays. Know your bro. Tune in next week as Matt and Mark put their brains together. Ten Kevin, questions. Oh the biggest friends. upset of the year already. I know, Kevin. right? Because <laughs> Notre Dame couldn't do it. That was in oh, yeah. Scotty, Scotty asked that a while back. He said um, he asked for Matt and I our thoughts on Notre Dame's bowl ban. Well, they don't have a bowl ban for starters. They've just been put on probation for a, a coach sending accidentally sending a, a, a text to a recruit. Um, I think it's the NCAA is fucking ridiculous. I guess Florida and Texas A&M are in the same boat, but somehow Clemson and Alabama and Ohio State are all in the clear. Uh, it seems kind of odd, but play by yeah. the rules. You can hear more about this on Tuesday night or Wednesday night for Huddle Tuesday Up. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday, Tuesday night's it. Huddle Up podcast. Did I hear hear Ryan, a Penn State fan, talk about playing by the rules? Is that what, uh, I, no. that what I was hearing? <laughs> we took our sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> we took them. It took a lot. It took a lot there. Um, a whole bunch. <laughs> Um, okay, this uh, this this topic um, was uh, from Wrestling Jeebus on Twitter. Uh, we, we stumbled into, into this one. Uh, obviously, WWE goes by the pay-per-view model of every month, um, whereas, you know, companies like Impact, AEW, hell, even NXT uh, only do four or five pay-per-views a year. And, and we... we, we came upon the topic, could the WWE, not will they, because we know they're not going to, but could they go back to a model of only having four or five pay-per-views a year? So you would assume Rumble, Mania, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, Money in the Bank, Night of Champions. Fast Lane. Brian. Me, me. Ryan's favorite, you know, maybe Great Balls of Fire, maybe, you know, go uh, go back and forth on those every year. And for me, I, I think I think they they could, you know, if you schedule the five, you know, the the big five for the WWE, whatever whatever the fifth one ends up being, and then in the off months, you do your takeovers. And then you can throw a couple of maybe NXT UK takeovers. So you have 12 pay-per-views a year, but they're not 12 main roster and then NXT takeover and then takeover UK. And then, you know, the occasional evolution or, 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 or you know, if they do a female pay-per-view or something like that. Like, I, I don't think it, it, it would be out of the realm of, of possibility. Then, then you, you know, you have more of a creation of, of longer term storyline. But I, you know, for me, again, realistically, I don't think we ever see this because one of the the sellers of the WWE Network is you get a pay per view every month. But it, but if you if you if they wanted to get really creative with the 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 annual schedule, I think you could go back to a formula of only you know five, maybe even if you want to do every other month and do six and then sprinkle other stuff throughout the year. I think it's it's possible. I don't think it's possible. Uh, you look at Impact, that's two hours a week. You look at AEW, that's two hours a week. You look at Raw and SmackDown, that is five and a hours a week. So that's two and a half times the hours of, of show building to things. You need to have two and a half times the pay-per-views to build to. I don't think you can go months on end, um, two, three, maybe, maybe three months on seven hours of TV time to build to something three months away. That's That's tough. 
would you want to would you want them to go back to like four combined pay-per-views and then you're off months doing branded no. pay-per-views or just no. continue as they are right now continue as is fair anybody else or yeah. i don't care do what they want um well, i mean obviously i i don't think they're changing what they're doing no I, I wouldn't i wouldn't change it if i had the book <laughs> Mark, were you going to say something? I was going to say, I enjoyed the uh, the four pay-per-views a year back in the day because they felt more special, but it's never going to go back. It's going to be at least one a month. Um, but yeah, back then the build was longer and the, the feuds meant a little more. Everything now is so rushed, but yeah, I like when they had the big four. I thought that was a perfect pay-per-view lineup. Yeah, I think that the the easy answer is yes, they could. Vince McMahon and the WWE can do whatever they want. The problem is, is that now they don't just answer to Vince McMahon. They answer to shareholders. Would the shareholders see profitability in cutting our pay, their pay-per-view de- numbers down from what? Is it 15, four, 14 a year to five? Like, is it 14? I mean, WrestleMania was two nights. So that technically probably oh, okay. counts as two. And then... In a perfect world, where there the wasn't there shows. Wasn't there two pay-per-views in October this year? Like, I thought one in early October, one in late October. I thought one was like a special event. Oh no! I guess not. They put Hell in a Cell. Yeah, Hell in a Cell. What was the other one? Was it uh, Bragging Rights? Over the limit. No, let me look at the. I was say, what was it? Vengeance. (laughs) Armageddon. Judgment Day. Uh, Unforgiven. Unforgiven. Fully loaded. Sin. The Great American Bash. (laughs) Greed. So uh, if you're counting heaven or hell, oh, now that's a all brawl. Black Sabbath song. So they did SummerSlam and Payback a week apart. Payback. And that's what it was. Oh. August had had the back to back. So if you count that, there was Jesus, one about that. That Super was- Showdowns two, Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania's four, Money in the Bank's five, Backlash, Extreme Rules, SummerSlam, Payback, Clash of Champions. 9, 10, 11, wait, that doesn't make any dang sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There was 13, if you count Super Sandown. Yeah, because I think they, they do go on pay-per-view. I mean, they're on the network, but I think right. they also do go out on pay-per-view as well. Right. And then if you count NXT events, which is something else, but then like... Add another one, two, so that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 events Jesus. in 2020. Yeah. It's a lot. That's it's a lot. lot. That's, that's, um, it's a lot yeah. of viewing. And, and that's why I said, like, this isn't something that is necessarily going to happen um, because it's, it's, it's. That, I mean that that's revenue. Oh, that's Tim, if I had just looked down by number of events per year, but so <laughs> even breaking it down over the last like six years, 2015 had 21, 16 had 21, 17 had 25, 18 had 23, 2019 had 27. Jesus, twenty six. Okay, because you had multiple Saudi shows, you had an Australia show, you had UK takeovers, you had That's Smackville, the special, the SmackDown That's special. Right. You did a couple of those. Yep. Uh, uh, you had Starcade. Starcade was in there. You had Crown Jewel. You had the Evolve special. Oh right, right. You had the Shield's final chapter. Oh, you, that's right. You that's had right. halftime heat. Oh, Christ. So these aren't things that are pay-per-views, though. But they're 
but they're ne- network, they're like network exclusive. Threat. Because like, really, sure, so that's these are reasons you wouldn't. Those are reasons you wouldn't get rid of the network. So I mean, if you cut back the actual quote pay per view, you still get all of those extra specials on the network, and you're not going to feel shorted. So yeah, only only I guess in 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 this question, I guess it would be the the number of events that actually go out on pay per view. They could do they could do the fight, but again, I feel like that that just become that does become a little complicated then because then you're you're building the things on TV that aren't going to be on pay. So like, I I feel like then it could and I, I guess that's and I think the WWE operates per the network not per pay-per-view anymore right see I, if they do switch to four or five events it makes television a little more special because they'd have to blow off some feuds right. on special editions of raw special editions of smackdown you'd have more title change more meaningful title changes on television than you would on the network um i mean between I, during the Attitude Era and the Monday Night War, um, the the model changed from being a make people watch it, make people come to TV after watching it on pay per view, than vice versa. Sure, like give it away. You don't give anything away on free TV. Make people pay for it now. I think now, I think they could do the reverse, like. Of course, WrestleMania is always going to be your blow off, and like SummerSlam is your blow off. Right. I mean, some events, like, some events are big in and of themselves. But if you only have, if you only have five, then you know that that time between WrestleMania in March or April to let's say let's say it's Money in the Bank in June, mm-hmm. like those couple of months, like there there needs to be more reason for why there's this match and this feud and this title match. And there will be times when there's title change here. Like, and we're not just talking, you know, the 24 seven title and the, the tag team titles. We're talking the, the raw women's title, SmackDown women's title, universal title, WWE championship. And you can come to expect that it would actually make some of those, some of those TV shows a little bit more uh, must see. Jason says, I'm not paying for pay-per-views plus the award-winning network are we talking they're going to change for these and not have them no i think it would just be that like the main roster big events on pay-per-view slash the award-winning wwe network the number would go to five i mean jbl told it told you best if you're buying them on pay-per-view you're an idiot he did tell us that You'd be stupid for buying them on pay per view. The money you'd spend on pay per view nine ninety nine a month. It's nine ninety nine dollars. You fucking idiot! And the first month's free. Look at my big stupid hat. Make more money now, Michael. I got a block you, Michael. Michael, I got a huge fucking dumb hat. People are gonna people been tweeting me about it, and then I block them, and it's a dumb hat. But I dance uh, like Deion Sanders, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it would be it would be like five main roster big shows a year, and then in the op, the uh, the off months, you would see maybe takeovers, UK takeovers, or or, or things like that. Um, Do you say big shows or big show shows? Not big show shows. Or go that, big that, shows. That or not go big shows. Those are that, both that, different. That that's that that's the Cody thing on on uh, TBS. Who? <laughs> um, Batter Mark, any thoughts? Who the hell is this? <laughs> well, I, I, the whole uh, with the network, the whole uh, just pay per views in general, I think, are kind of on their way out. I, I don't know anybody that. Uh, that buys a WWE pay per view anymore. There's Everybody gotta be, either. It's got to be like three of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, you have to the uh, the taglines get people to buy them. <laughs> <laughs> well, they you know if they would have better taglines, more yeah, more people That's would, would buy the pay per view, not to have the network. Hi Sherry. 
I would I would buy the pay per view while I have the network if the tagline's good enough. That yeah, that's true. You'd never see it coming, Matt. You wouldn't. <laughs> I would just I throw in the towel. I would I would just spend the money. I hope both your flights get delayed. <laughs> Why are you now jumping on that that bandwagon of, of the towel throwing? Like I know it bothers Tim. Why does it bother you? I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I thought that I thought it was great. I love the angle. I love the towel throwing angle. It was one of my matches of the year two years ago. Hence when Mustache question. Mountain did it. This is the bother first, me none. This is the first time you have ever opposed to be making fun of that spot, like in the history of this show. Matt, I don't even know you. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with that. What I, the um, hell is even that? What, I don't I don't oppose it. I, I, I oppose the taglines that you were making fun of moments ago. Oh, I, okay. I oppose taglines in general. And then you put in about the towel throwing, and I was fine with that. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. What, what, what do you have against taglines? Is it because you are... are Jim, subscribed? I'm the better friend. Let's move on. <laughs> As oh, as dude. better friend, you have to move on. It's seniority. That's true. I have to move on. I let's go to the uh, to the news and rumors, and how appropriate that you know you're right. You wanted me to move on because the first item in the news this week is Ryan's favorite pay per view is back in 2021. Mimi, WWE Fast Lane. Mimi. Is returning this year. The last WWE Fast Lane beep, beep. was held in 2019, but PW Insider reports the event will return this year on March 21st. The Fast Lane beep, beep. 2021 will be held, of course, at Tropicana Field, St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, will be the final pay per view before WrestleMania. Uh, the final, uh, the following dates have been confirmed for the next few months. Of course, Royal Rumble, uh, January 31st. Uh, WWE NXT TakeOver from the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando. February 21st is Elimination Chamber, of course, from the WWE Thunderdome. March 21st, Fastlane. Me beep. From Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. And then WrestleMania, uh, as we already talked about earlier, April 10th and 11th from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Uh, so that is the pay-per-view schedule as we know it. Um, I mean... Don't get me wrong. I am looking forward to being able to do this. Me, me. Just to get under Ryan's skin uh, during during the month of uh, March. But I still stand by my feeling that there should not be pay-per-views between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. Because why is there? But Jim, it's the fast lane to WrestleMania. Me, me. Ryan, are you just mad that there's no roadblock? this year <laughs> it's so dumb it's so like it's what is not the tagline? Dumb. it is dumb what is the tagline gonna be uh fast lane this is the most cliche thing we could come up with get out of here it's stupid it's insulting to wrestling fans fast lane buckle in baby <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a great tagline. so summer so yeah. summer slam isn't cliche or wrestlemania but no. fast lane because you're on the fast lane to wrestle me. It's no, it's stupid. <laughs> okay. So dumb. Uh, but it does make sense to have it either a roadblock or a fast lane because there's only one winner of the Royal Rumble for each division. So if a SmackDown person wins, you have to set up the Raw main event some way. And if it, you do roadblock, it makes the champion defend the title one last time before WrestleMania to change things up. I Didn't think it's that perfect. Used to be elimination chamber. Oh, like, isn't that why they do the chamber it, though? Elimination wow. chamber got moved to later in the year. No, right. it's scheduled for the twenty first of February. Is it really? According to PW Insider. Then so they're, they're doing really elimination ladies. chamber <laughs> and fast lane? There's no reason for fast. Lane. Yeah, there's takeover on the 14th. Thank you, February, Matthew. El Elimination Thank you. Chamber on the 21st, and then fast lane is in March. Oh God! They could do uh, no way out <laughs> instead of a fast lane. <laughs> they might as well bring. Back, they might as well bring back end of the line at this point. Well, that was roadblock. And I like, and I like, I get they're they're 
horseshoeing one in in the month of March because that's when WrestleMania was supposed to be. But, like, just let it go. It's okay. Or move Elimination Chamber to March. You already have TakeOver in March. We don't uh-huh. need to. I mean, if, if you're having Rumble at end of January, why can't you have Chamber at, like, first weekend in March and then maybe right. first weekend in April? Like, we're not yeah. waiting that long at that point. Yeah, I mean, there's there's literally there's literally three weeks between the Rumble and the Chamber, and then there's a month till Fastlane. Meep, meep. <laughs> and February is a short month anyway. We have Groundhog's Day, so. That's true. We do have Groundhog's Day. That'll get us through. Uh, Jason says the worst was Great Balls of Fire. Devin agrees with Matt. Capital uh, punishment. Oh, wow, that was bad. Yeah. Armageddon. Armageddon was usually December. December. Yeah, it was the end was of the year. Bad. It was great. Year. I loved it. It was a SmackDown pay per view. Yeah. That's why it sucked. No, it's great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the yell matches. <laughs> All those Batista matches, baby. Woo. Ugh. All right. Then we go to this. The premiere of the new WWE Icons docuseries has been announced uh, for Sunday, January 31st. I'm sure the episode, as normal, will drop uh, during the day. But officially, it will drop uh, probably after the Royal Rumble. Um, the premiere episode will focus on WWE Hall of Famer Yokozuna. Uh, future episodes of WWE Icons will feature Rob Van Dam, Lex Luger, the 2020 Hall of Famer British Bulldog, and uh, WWE Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix. So uh, more um, docu-series coming to the award-winning WWE Network. Uh, this one uh, popped up over the weekend. Um, AEW has filed a trademark on the famous wrestling catchphrase and hand gesture to Sweet. Um, the United States Patent and Trademark Office on January 11th. AEW filed the trademark for use in merchandising apparel uh, and merchandising, merchandising, and entertainment services. WWE had previously filed a trademark for the hand gesture in 2015, but ran into problems due to a similar one being owned by the University of Texas. WWE abandoned the trademark in 2017. Pro Wrestling Tees parent company, Creative Ventures, Inc., attempted to file a trademark for it in 2017 for... Merchandising! Merchandising! But uh, but was denied. It was abandoned in 2019. So we'll kind of keep an eye uh, on the status. This should be no surprise, obviously, between AEW and Impact with uh, the, a certain club uh, in this portion of the world getting back together. Uh, it seems uh, quite appropriate. Then uh, Tony Khan was a guest on Renee Young's Oral Sessions podcast and added uh, as, and spoke about adding another AEW TV show. He said, uh, I'm really excited about a, adding a third hour of TV, and I think there's going to be an, a, the most important thing for us. We've accumulated so much talent and so much depth on the roster and being able to showcase all of our great wrestlers. Um, it will not be a third hour of Dynamite. It will not be on Wednesday, but it will be a third hour with Warner Media." Um, and it'll be great exposure for us. We have Dark, which has been a great platform for up and comers on YouTube. And I think uh, there are other streaming options and other shows we can do with YouTube or other streaming platforms. So there's going to be more opportunities. There's going to be more real estate for our wrestlers without oversaturating. Uh, I definitely don't want to do three hours of dynamite. It's funny, he says they doesn't want to oversaturate, but they literally have like 47 matches each week on AW Dark. Um, is so there a, is did he say he definitely doesn't want to do three hours, or was that you saying that? That was that was him. That was a direct <laughs> quote from Tony Khan. I mean, I I certainly don't want it either, but uh, that was direct from the mouth of Tony Khan. So, random question: How many matches was on AEW or how long? How long was AEW Dark this week? Um. An hour and 39 minutes. One hour and 17 minutes. Any other guesses, Mark? Uh, Mark? 22 hours. It's <laughs> a good guess. It's a good guess. I am going to say it was 97 minutes. It was 
one hour, 58 minutes, 19 seconds with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 matches. Oh my God. Who the hell cares? <laughs> and the longest of them being seven minutes. Oh, so these are like indie shows. Great. <laughs> it's almost like the old uh, wrestling challenge and wrestling superstars for WWF tapings. The sad thing is, I think I would really enjoy watching it. I just, I don't, I don't like watching things on YouTube. I you know, guess. I, I have, don't know. I, you know, I've been, like, I'm a wrestling fan. I want to watch wrestling. You can I've push it to your TV. Of... I know. I know. It's like a yeah, button. Think push. Of a YouTube app from the Roku. What are you? Ah, <laughs> like it's not that hard. It's almost like you're watching TV, just regular TV. I said what I said. <laughs> ah, ah. I know, I'm gonna. I might have to isolate. That I mean, one. you could have watched. Like it. You could have watched a great match like Luchasaurus versus Brandon Cutler. You could have watched. Oh, is that where Brandon Cutler got dumped straight on his noggin? Probably. I, uh, I saw a clip of that this week. I also saw Jericho doing the worst. Lion salt ever. <laughs> Brutal. He like, like, sat there afterwards look, and he I'm not even good. I'm not even gonna dive into his politics. If you want to hear Jim Cornette do a 20 minute promo on that one, uh it's on his YouTube. The yeah. fact that Jericho gave forty thousand dollars to Donald Trump. But for Chris Jericho is a guy that like has repeatedly talked about like Brock Lesnar like hanging on too long and being fat and out of shape. And then we get the bloated corpse of the COVID god each and every week on Dynamite to where he almost paralyzes himself trying to do a lion salt. Are you fucking and now but he says he's gonna he's gonna make up for it and next week do two of them. So we get to see that next week on so Dynamite. People lose their mind when Jericho, after like thirty years of wrestling, messes up one lion salt, but we forgive Keith Lee for almost killing himself. With a Spanish fly like three weeks earlier. I mean, I think we talked about that too. The, the only <laughs> difference was that when Jericho did the lion salt, like when he sat up, it looked like inside of his head, he was like, What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was probably embarrassed. Yeah. It's no, it was, it was like he was contemplating, like, Do I just like leave? Should I just like be like, No. Nope. I'm out of here, guys. Bye. It wasn't even the lion salt that I had a problem with. It's that he slowly stepped up to the second row to what do messed the lion up. salt. That's what messed him up. <laughs> he didn't jump. He simply stepped up to the second rope. Uh-oh. What am I going to do now? The only way it could have been better is if he got to the second rope and then went one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, uh, now I, so he says on Warner media, what other channels? Cause that, he, he didn't, he didn't specify TNT did Tony Khan on this. So the, the, there's not, there's not a guarantee that this is on TNT. I would assume if it's going to be on TNT, he would say that. All right. So, uh, let me the look. CW. There's uh, TBS. I'm looking to see. What about Turner Classic Movie Channel? Well, that's where Jericho's going to wrestle on. <laughs> <laughs> so they have TBS, TNT, Shut True TV. Um, Was that True TV? True TV. That's where it'll end up. Oh, come on, you, you can't, you can, you can't shoehorn a program in between Impractical Jokers and. Uh, What's the other one? The the the, the, the magician. Yeah, <laughs> Fuck, Carbonaro effect. Yeah, yeah. Car <laughs> it's it, like literally. I don't care what time of day it is. They could for that two it hour fits window perfectly. The Jokers are all wrestling fans. Well, um, that's true. I think it would fit a match made in heaven. Well, there's that two hour window where from like two a.m. to four a.m. where the My Pillow guy's on. So I, I don't think Jericho's gonna bump his buddy off of that. Oh, that's a good point. I mean, so that Turner or Warner Media also owns HBO. So they also own 
Bleacher Report. Oh, so we could pretend. So it's potentially not even a a cable program. He said Warner Media for a very re, for a very uh-huh. special reason. That uh, that's interesting. Okay, um, I mean it's something to watch. Uh, again, I mean if, here's the deal: if it's not, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I watched every wrestling program of the of the big of the big two in in a normal week. Better change uh, your mind coming up uh, the week of April 11th. I mean, you know, main, you know, mania season, I will obviously be a little bit more tuned in, but uh, you know, as of late, I I've watched most of raw, usually some of AEW and NXT, and then a little bit of SmackDown usually, um, you know, kind of catching like the replays, uh, and, and highlights. Um, but you know, it, I'm not. I'm not surprised they're adding more programming. Again, they they do have it. They do have a huge roster, but I mean, and and also you're you're adding talent from outside of uh, outside of your roster as well. So it does make sense for them to add something to it. Um. But yeah, that otherwise I have nothing else, uh, this week for the show guy. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add. If anybody wants to add anything otherwise we'll close well, i mean up. there's a piece of news that didn't get covered um aew announced um today that uh at aew revolution in february revolution. Yep. it will be uh the team of brian cage and ricky starks in a street fight taking on Darby Allen and Sting. Ryan, you're waving your hands. Ryan's just have... waiting for the, the tagline <laughs> before he buys into this. <laughs> you want me to play the price is wrong music? Uh, I can do that. <laughs> I mean, I'll say this. I'm happy he's not competing for a championship. So they, they got they got one part of the 60-year-old guy uh, right. Um, and I mean, here's the thing. If he's going to wrestle, which, you know, they, you know they, they made very clear from the beginning that he was intending to, um, I think this is the better spot. Because it's, you know, that you can let Darby Allen do most of the work. Uh, it's a street fight, so there's minimal bumping there. Um, am I a fan of it? No, I, I don't. I don't need to see Sting wrestle. Um, I know Tim, you're 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 a, definitely a Sting guy. Um, but I mean, if it's gonna happen, I'd prefer it in 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 this in this sort of a, a of a format as opposed to you know a fifty three year old Bill Goldberg wrestling for a world championship. So at least, cause I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, you go back to the, the, um, was it battleground extreme rules or whatever pay-per-view it was the, 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 the graveyard dogs took on Shane in the Miz like that, that, that was a great spot for the undertaker at that point because he, him and Shane had to do minimal work. Oh, and Drew and, and uh, Roman did the, did the heavy lifting. So if you're going to have somebody in, you know, who's in the, the, the latter part of their career, th- this is probably the better spot for it. I'm just glad that uh, Sting can still fulfill his lifelong dream and that Seth Rollins didn't take that away from him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Frank. Appreciate the, appreciate the. It's Tim, what so, do you think about so it? Dangerous. Obviously, you're you're a sting guy. I don't want to see it, but I'm gonna see it, and it's gonna be fun. Anybody else got anything to add this week? No. Nope. All right, let's uh, let's start closing this thing up. Matt, we'll start with you. Uh, Woman of the week this week. Yes, one of the week this week. I'm keeping true to my word here in 2021, featuring a new one every week. Marina Tucker this week. So go give her a follow on our Instagram page at 
Freak Out Thursday. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at 3CT, the letter A, Philly as in Philadelphia, the number eight. Still kind of political. I'm cleaning that up a bit, but there's just so many dumb fucking congressmen that I love to retweet their stupid shit. Stupid idiot. So maybe in February I'll give that up. Or for Lent, maybe I'll do that. Um, I also whine about the Sixers, sometimes the Flyers, um, but that's about it. Phillies are coming up soon. I'll whine about them too. Uh, Tim, what do you got? Uh, at the, not the tool man across all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, if you care. <laughs> um, but mainly, uh, aside from being here on Three Count Thursday, I am actively doing a podcast called Final Wrestling Place, where uh, we take your favorite persons or least favorite persons places and things in the world of wrestling and assign them arbitrary red points and green points and put them either in the good place or the bad place. Uh, this week, we are covering the King of the Ring tournament. Um, as a whole, uh, is it good? Is it bad? And where does it belong in the middle? Um, we are also in development for a second podcast with Marcus and I, um, going to be a recap style paper or or for, uh, live pay-per-view events, um, entitled viewer's choice. Um, so it's going to be fun. That'll debut the Monday after each uh, main pay-per-view for WWE, AEW, and NXT. Um, it's going to be a, a great fun ride. I'm looking forward to it. Um, get both of those podcasts wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, intern Mark, what do you got to plug this week? Boy, let me think here. I uh, Let's see. We talked about Hodecker Celery. Last week, we talked about Marion's Pies changing her name. Um, well, I'm trying to think of something here. I, I had some, I don't remember what it was. Well, chocolate covered February is coming up at Hershey's to so get ready for that in the next few weeks. That's always a good time. Um, when does the park reopen? Well, it's not officially announced yet, but I'm reasonably certain it's going to be the first day of spring, which is March 20th. It'll be a Saturday, Saturday and Sunday for springtime in the park. If they follow like a normal year, it should be March 20th for the weekend. And then the next weekend and the third and final weekend for springtime would be Easter weekend. That'd be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I'm looking forward to that. That'll be exciting. Very good. Ryan, got anything? Alexa, order the best friends award. Um, no, I don't, I don't have anything. You can follow me. Um, I tweet sometimes. It's R Y N E A G L E. Uh, but make sure you're always following uh, our show, the Three Count Thursday show, uh, with the number three, never the word. At uh, Jimmy, you, you know, just you can do your shit. You're the host. All right, very good. I, I'm sorry I let everybody down uh, who uh, put money on me to beat Ryan and, and know your bro this week. But we will revisit that uh, next week with uh, with Matt and Mark. Um, you know, I. I have my I have the little uh, board behind me with uh, with a little saying or whatever each week. I have forty six this week. It was a good it was a good day yesterday. Um, hopefully things are, are are good moving forward. But the, the important thing to remember: be good to each other because regardless of where we fall, we have to deal with each other, and and that's I think one of the most important things uh, to remember with everything. Make sure you go to three count Thursday dot com. There you'll find all of our social media links. Uh, YouTube, our merchandise, our collar and elbow brand deal, literally every single thing uh, three count related. Uh, you can find over at three count Thursday dot uh, com. Subscribe, share, let people know about the show. Uh, until next week, guys, stay safe, stay smart and go for the pain. Recount Thursday is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, arenaeats.app, that's arenaeats.app, for the ultimate fan experience. At your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. 
How do you place your order?